a British, you've got a British accent. Like you're really influenced by the British accents. Where did you yeah. live in England? Um, so I lived in the north, in York, Manchester, Leeds, in, mm -hmm. in those areas. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, the accent is a bit thick as well in those parts. Yes, so it was interesting to learn as mm -hmm. well. When when was the first time you you moved to um, to England? Um, it was twelve. Is it twelve years ago? I think <laughs> a oh, very long so it's time quite ago. A long, yeah, it's a quite yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. And how was this movement like? Uh, how old were you then? Like uh, I was eighteen. 18 yeah so pretty yeah. young I yes. was yeah I just I mm -hmm. finished high school and I didn't know what to do so I thought if I know English at least is one skill that I can add on my CV and then I will see um, mm -hmm. and then years later I became a teacher so <laughs> it's yeah you started circle. teaching exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. good so um, did you speak English back then when you just moved to England or You moved and then you started learning. Yeah, well... How was your English back then? We studied English at school here from mm -hmm. a young age, but my English wasn't good. I, I could say, furthermore, moreover, I think, I agree, I disagree. Mm -hmm. um, so I could write some essays or like short text, but mm -hmm. I couldn't speak really. And in fact, when I, I went to the UK, Um, I, my first level in my English school was A2, so quite low, mm -hmm. and um, I stayed yeah. there not for a long time because, yeah, it was like A2 plus, so I stayed in that class for about two or three weeks just to get used to speaking a bit and, you know, the accent, yeah. the vocabulary, the basic things, and then I, I was a B1 pretty quickly, but... Um, Yeah, I was an A2, and I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. I was so Someone scared. is saying you still have... Um, someone is saying here you still have French uh, epithets. Okay. Yeah, he said. Yeah, uh, so you have, you're still yeah. influenced by the French uh, accent. and. For sure. Well, yeah. I live in France now, so obviously, you know, it's going to, to be a part of it, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So our topic today is supposed to be um, learning English at home, which is a great thing to speak about, which is like the topic of today. Like many people now are speaking about this. How can we do this? How can we learn English? We don't want to go to language schools or we don't have time to do that. Uh, we want a method. We want a way to learn English uh, at home. But before we jump into the topic, uh, I would like to... Uh, To talk about some things related to your journey to uh, mm -hmm. to England, like when you just moved there, you couldn't you couldn't speak. I see you could, you weren't that fluent in the language, right? No, not at all. Yeah. So being immersed <laughs> uh, being immersed in the language in in Britain or in England is th that's what helped you like improve your speaking skills. Um, I think it was a mix of a lot of things because when I went there. Um, I was 18, I was alone, and I, wanted, I was in quite a small city uh, in England, and um, there was no French, so I had mm -hmm. no option but to try to speak English. So mm -hmm. yeah. I think a lot of factors influenced why I learned pretty quickly and, uh, and, and I progressed quickly, but um, I didn't have a choice, and also I was working as an au pair, So, you know, it's like when you live in a family and you, you beg your seat and, uh, and you work for the family, you live with them as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was surrounded by the English language 24-7. So, yes, you were yeah, immersed in the language. Completely, yeah. completely, yeah. Yeah, this is what really helped you improve your speaking skills and it's pretty obvious, like, from the way you speak. Someone is, uh, is, uh, is saying, like, tell her to speak French. Well, not that good in, in French, but uh, yeah, maybe in another life, yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. here in uh, in my country, we study. It's like the same thing happened to us here in uh, in Morocco. We study French from a very early age. Mm -hmm. Like, we start studying French at the age of let's say seven, seven, yeah, seven or yeah. eight years old. 
yes, until the age of 18. So it's mm. quite a long time. And the same thing for me. I could write in French. I can do many stuff. I understand when I listen and everything. But my speaking abilities are very, very, very limited. So mm. you can say it's pretty the same thing for you. You start learning English at a very early age in France, right? Yeah, it's, it's basically But the still same, speaking, yeah. speaking is a different thing. Like speaking mm -hmm. needs, um, other things needs immersion, needs, uh, needs you to, to, to get yourself involved in conversations and stuff so that you can... For sure. That's the difficult yes. part because mm -hmm. even if we study at school, we are like in a room with 30 other students and you speak maybe five minutes every week. So even, mm -hmm. even if you have a lot of hours of studying, you can write and understand, but you can't really speak because you, you didn't have that opportunity before. Um, so having opportunities to speak at school is not that easy. So mm -hmm. if you want to be able to speak fluently, you have to, to do it yourself, basically, apart from school. Yeah. Yeah, you have to speak outside school. Someone here is saying in the comments, eight years old, but the problem is with the educational system. Do you think that the problem in your country is with the educational system? Is that, that's why you didn't learn how to speak English? Uh, yeah, th that's, that's also a problem, definitely, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Part <laughs> of the problem, let's, let's not say it's all the problem, but part of the problem. Yeah, yeah, it, it's always mm -hmm. like many problems are involved but that's that's basically mm -hmm. one because we study things that are quite complicated but we mm -hmm. can't even introduce ourselves in English for example yes so yes. like what's the point you can't make yeah. a sentence but you can't speak that's about it. vocabulary like in India of like the government or something like there is no no yes. point doing that <laughs> sure 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 that that's the point actually if we learn a language then we have we have to learn all the all the, the the skills related to that language. It it makes no sense that a student like who graduated and he's like good at writing, but comes to speaking, he's he just doesn't know how to do it. So that's yeah. that's a really that's a really big issue. So, mm -mm. uh huh. Good. So, uh, Marine or Marion or I don't know how to. Yeah, it's that. quite good. Yeah. Is it, is it Marion? <laughs> is it Marion? Yeah, that's this perfect. Way? Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good. So, uh, good. Let's see. Now we have learning English at home. Now many people are asking uh, about this thing. But before we start learning uh, English at home, uh, what are the things that we should keep in mind before going? Is it a good choice, first of all, to learn English at home, or to work on a skill at home? Is it the good choice, or we should do other things? We should go for schools, centers, something. That, that's a good question, actually. I mean, obviously, if you teach, you want to say, come to me. <laughs> of course. But, uh, yeah. let's, not, let's not me. Yeah. I teach also online. Let's yeah. not talk as teachers. Okay, let's talk as... Uh... <laughs> but, yeah, I think, I think it depends. Mm. Again, for example, if you don't have enough money, I mean, you don't have enough money. So, of course, it's, it's good to study on your own. If you have the time and the money it's easier and faster to have a teacher explaining things to you, talking with you as well. So I guess it's just preferences. If you want to spend money on that because it's your priority at the moment, if you have a deadline, you know, something very specific you want to achieve, okay, maybe a teacher is better. If it's just for personal reasons and you want to focus on one specific topic or vocabulary, let's say, uh, for example, mm -hmm. if you are a personal trainer and you want to speak mm -hmm. English, but only because you want to speak with your clients, you want to know the different movements in English, maybe it's not necessary to hire someone and to pay a teacher mm -hmm. to do that yes. as well. So the needs, you need to, to know what your needs are and your goals as well and adapt mm -hmm. from there. Yeah, I would say. But both are great. Yeah. And even if you have a teacher, you have to study alone. So, <laughs> Of course. Yeah. yeah they, I, I, they I usually say this to my students. 
Yes, I usually say this to my students. Even if you have a personal tutor or teacher, you have to do some extra work by yourself. Of course. Because yeah. uh, as you said in the beginning, uh, you studied for some quite long time. But when it comes to speaking, you, you couldn't do that. But when once you move to a country that speaks English and you find yourself in the situation, you find yourself like obliged to speak the language, that's where you start to to learn and to uh, to master this skill, which is speaking. Yeah, exactly, good. So yeah. Uh, it depends on your goals, as you said, and it depends on what you want to do with your English. Mm -hmm. um, good. Now we decided to learn English um, at home. Um, mm -hmm. I think that one of the reasons that people start to learn a language uh, at home and after some time they stop or they get demotivated mostly uh, it happens to many people what is the mm -hmm. reason behind this or what, what can we what can one do to avoid like getting into this situation I think the first thing is that a lot of people are motivated the first week or the first month and they mm -hmm, do a yeah. lot of things like they start doing three hours every day you know they get excited but you need to find a routine that you can keep doing for a long time. Um, if you do three hours every day, good for you. But I don't think that's doable. I don't think it's possible with your life if you have a job, if you're a student, if you have a family. It's quite complicated. So, yeah, you need to find a routine you can keep so you don't mm -hmm. get unmotivated and, and you keep studying, you keep learning. And uh, maybe the second thing as well is if you do things that are not really of interest for you, you need to yes. find topics you like because you are alone. Mm -hmm. So it's even more complicated, probably. So you need to mm -hmm. find things you like, things to watch that you enjoy. Um, again, it could be sports, it could be travels, it could be like very specific topics. And you can find a lot of different materials around that to study and to stay mm -hmm. motivated, of course, yeah. Yeah, that would be you mentioned two things. great points. Yeah, you mentioned two great points, actually. Um, trying to develop some habits. I, I usually, like, uh, advise my students to do this. Try to develop some habits. Like, every morning, I have to listen to podcasts while uh, having my breakfast, for example. If you That's make it as a example. habit, you'll enjoy it. Yeah, this is just an example. You can build on that and you can make many, many, many habits. So mm -hmm. because habits, you know, habits, we keep doing them every day. Even if you lose, if you are demotivated, you will still listen to podcasts while uh, while having your breakfast, which is a good thing. Yeah. yeah and definitely. also the one, the point that I liked about what you said is try to link what you are doing uh, with what you love, like things yeah. you love. Yeah, if you yeah. watch football, like uh, I used to like football, and uh, I used to listen to uh, to English commentary, which really helps. You can do that. You can link what you uh, link learning English to to that. That's good. For so, sure. Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and good. So uh, we are like motivated. Yeah, we are moti motivated, and everything goes great, but. Um, what are the things that we should start with as beginners, as someone who doesn't know anything in the language? Because here in Morocco, I used to get this question because the first, the second language is French and mm -hmm. English is like the third choice. So Arabic, French, and then English. Mm -hmm. So people here are uh, 25, 26, 28, and they just start learning the language. They know nothing. What That's should they start with? Mm -hmm. Um... I would say start with the basics. So maybe start with vocabulary you can use every day and you can reuse around you to get used to some vocabulary, some pronunciation. So I don't know things like the food you have, um, like to cook, uh, you know, words you can reuse every day and you can reuse alone as well. So for example, yeah. if you're cooking like an omelette, then you can try mm -hmm. to remember these words and say, oh, I'm cooking an omelette or I like omelette. Is this omelette? Is that a French word? No? Yes. It, is, it is a French word. It is a French word. <laughs> That's it's yeah. the only thing that yeah. came I to recognize, <laughs> you know, I recognize French words like very quickly because in, uh, French is more familiar to me, you know, or mm -hmm. anyone here in Morocco because it's the, the, the second language. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have we have quite a lot of words in English that are the same in French or vice versa. Yeah, as the well. cafe. 
yeah. Cafe yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> many words. So we should start with the basics of English. Yes, yeah. and uh, some people they worry like when they start with the basics. Uh, they um, and I don't like this actually. Right? It is a mistake in learning any language. They want to learn fast, and they go for. In listening, for example, they listen to things they don't really understand. They listen to native speakers speaking very fast, which mm -hmm. makes them like demotivate very quickly. Um, they read things that are really hard. So, yeah, so they find this uh, this problem. So they want to jump into uh, advanced language like very quickly. Yeah. So yeah, what yeah, should we listen to? What should we pick up in listening? Um, well, you can find listening to that are good for your own level let's say a1 you know beginners uh you can listen to children like cartoons or stories as well uh, yeah. like i my students if i have i don't usually have beginners but when i have beginners i tell them about peppa pig because that's the most like british things you can find <laughs> so mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's short, you know, it's five minutes, it's not too long. Uh, you can guess the words with the pictures if you don't understand. So, yeah, short things and adapt mm -hmm. it to your level and then you can progress. But, yeah, you need, you need mm -hmm. to do um, specific things, specific listenings for sure. Mm -hmm. Good. And after listening and learning the basics, um, what should we do? Like... Uh, well, I guess the first thing you have to do, even after just a couple of weeks of learning, is finding someone to speak with or like speak to yourself, but it gets mm -hmm. a bit complicated. Yes. But finding a, a partner, a speaking partner is very, very important. And now with social media and, and apps, you can do that very easily. So mm -hmm. there is no excuse, really. <laughs> but you yeah, need to produce the language. Yeah, you need there's to no produce. excuse, and I, yeah, and I've seen many people like trying to um, to do this, even recording yourself while speaking and listen afterwards. It gets you to um, to listen to yourself and correct uh, the mistakes you've done, or have mm -hmm. someone else correct for you. This is really uh, another great way to do it. Yeah, uh, doing things at home, like I, I usually say this, doing things, learning or um, writing something anything uh, it can be a challenge sometimes especially if you have a family don't you think so yeah when you have family yeah. and you have other responsibilities that gets really complicated to do things at home yeah it, it does for sure it is more more complicated and um, you just need to make it a priority as well uh, even mm -hmm. if it's like again it doesn't have to be one hour like that's what I say of course you don't have an hour or you might not have an hour in your day to do that but if it's five minutes of you know pronouncing the words writing something about your omelette of the day I don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah. that's fine you know that's good good enough great and then maybe another day you will have more time and you can speak a bit more or write a bit more but it is that balance to do a little bit a lot of times I think um, yeah. and you know, for example, I'm trying to study Spanish, but lately mm -hmm. it hasn't been my priority. So I stopped completely. But when it will be a priority again, then mm -hmm. I will do that. You know, I will I will do little things a lot of times and um, and, and try to keep that routine. But uh, yeah. but I won't have two hours every day. So that does I know it. That's just not possible. So you need yeah. to find a way. Yeah, you need to find a way to uh, to learn uh, the English language. This is uh, hello everybody here in the comments. Hello, brother. So happy mm -hmm. to see you here, friends. You're joining. Thank you so much for your interaction. I see a lot of comments and people are liking the ideas that we're speaking about uh, right now with Marion again. I try to pronounce your name uh, in French. Yeah, so but it's, it's actually really yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Good. So if your priority is learning English and you're really into that, uh, uh, I would like to ask uh, a question that people ask me, which is, um, mm -hmm. 
when we start learning the language, we are new to the language, and one of the, the problems that, that we face is um, our pronunciation. The major issue, the major problem is pronunciation. Like, we're not confident enough that our pronunciation looks good. We're not mm -hmm. confident that we're pronouncing the words in the correct way. So when it comes to practicing or speaking to someone or even speaking to ourselves, sometimes we, we just can't do it because we think we don't have enough self-confidence to do that. What, yeah. what is your advice to these people? That's a big problem, and I think it's a problem everywhere. Um, and a lot of people, they have a good enough pronunciation, so they can be understood, they can have, they can communicate, they can um, have a conversation, but because they are scared and because they are not confident enough, they are not going to speak. That's crazy, because it's just, yeah. it's just mental. Just in the brain. It's a mental problem. Um, and of course, sometimes you have pronunciation problems. And as you said, recording yourself is a great idea to analyze mm -hmm. how you speak, because sometimes we speak and we don't realize like what we said is wrong or like it could be better. So recording mm -hmm. yourself, that's a good advice for sure. And, um, a lot of repetitions. Um, you yes. have a lot of YouTube videos, for example, about pronunciation with specific words. So if you know you have a problems, you have problems with the R, for example, try to search for videos with R pronunciation and repeat, mm -hmm. practice, and then record a first time, practice during maybe one week or two weeks, and see after, record yourself again, and see if your pronunciation evolved, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I think witnessing your progress is actually something that is going to help with motivation as well. Because yeah. you're like, oh, yeah, the first one, I didn't say that correctly. It wasn't that good. I wasn't very confident. And I can see the progress with the second audio. And that's great because you're alone yeah. and nobody tells you if it's good or not. So, yeah. Having having yeah. to witness that is is good. Yeah, and having feedback as well, like having someone to give you feedback, this is actually one of the things that really helps because sometimes you speak. Um, one of the things actually I recall many times is um, reading out loud. I don't know if you have yeah anything about this, but reading out loud is is also a great way because reading out loud it helps you like to do many things at the same time. You're reading, first of all, you're getting new vocabulary and stuff, and you're listening to yourself. That's very important. It's like you're doing listening. You're listening to yourself. You're correcting sometimes your pronunciation as well. Mm -hmm. So it is a great way that we should try. Like uh, reading out loud, guys, is one of the greatest ways. For sure. I recommend that all the time to my students. And uh, I think it makes a big difference as well in intonation, not only pronunciation, but intonation as well, because yes. you're reading. Mm -hmm. And if you understand what you read at the same time, sometimes that's the problem as well. You read, but you don't understand at the same time. But when it's yeah. adapted to your level and you understand at the same time what you're reading, then your intonation changes just like in your own language, in your first language. And mm -hmm. if you practice that a lot, then as you said, pronunciation is going to be better because you're producing the sound. Intonation is going to improve and uh, as well as vocabulary expressions and everything really. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a question here related in the comments. It said, someone is saying, I just want to speak to pronounce English as the American people. Um, uh, many learners, they start uh, with this idea or they favor one uh, one type of English, like Australian, American. But the most common ones or the most famous ones are American and British. Mm -hmm. they, fa they favor like British accent or they favor American. Is this a problem when you when we start learning or? I, I mean, I don't think it's a problem, but it's not a problem because people don't actually know what the accent is. <laughs> um, yes. They think British or American, but there are so many different options. And they usually think of like the proper, perfect, clear, very clear accent, which is yes. not the case in reality. Like mm -hmm. if you go to England or if you go to America, people are going to have a lot of different accents. So 
I yes. think they have that like fantasy of accent, but mm-hmm. it's not really realistic anyway. So I, I think it's not really a problem at the beginning. Yeah, it might be later if you want to specialize more, but at the beginning you just have to struggle and to try to pronounce anyway. So yeah, yeah. even if it's Tell very us about, different. Yeah. Tell us about the first time you got into uh, you got to uh, to Britain to England. How did you find the accent there? Did you find difficulties understanding people like speaking to you? Oh yeah, for sure. The the first couple of months, um, I didn't understand anything. So like in the bus, I was not understanding people um, at the supermarket or you know. Mm. Just so did you do Spanish there or you struggle no. to? Yeah, I was like, sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand. This is not what I read in school. Exactly. Yeah. This it's doesn't not in my look manual. like school. Yeah, it's not in my manual. I don't understand this. Sorry, what language are you speaking? Yeah, it happens. And, and I imagine myself, like, never been to, to England, but I imagine if I go there, and especially to a reason that the accent is not familiar to me, I imagine that I would find a lot of difficulties understanding people. Even though I can speak English, uh, I may not be able to, and this is pretty normal, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, you know, between British and American people, or even in England, depending on where the people are, they don't understand each other. Yeah. So it's totally normal. And I don't know if, um, if, if you saw that, but two weeks ago, I was in Ireland, um, and... I, I talked about that. I said, I, I understood everyone except one guy. Um, I took a taxi in the morning and the taxi driver had a really thick accent. And he was beautiful, but I had no idea what he said. <laughs> oh. So you didn't understand anything? <laughs> no, and even him, like I was talking to him and he didn't understand me. And I was like, we are speaking the same language. <laughs> How is that possible? We're speaking the I same know. language and still we couldn't understand. It, it's really reasonable, you know. Uh, even in, I, I believe in any country in the world, um, it, it happens. Even in the same country, you don't understand some reason, some dialects. It's oh, pretty sure. normal. We have this in, 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 in Morocco. I think we also have this. People in the north, they don't understand some expressions here. And, it, and it's totally normal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> Good. Let's let's see now um, the questions that I've received many questions. Uh, okay. Guys, if you have any questions, you write them here. In there is a question box at down below here. Yes. Someone is asking about a French word in the comments. It's a cliche. Oh. What does it mean? Um, like a stereotype. So, for example, if you think of a French person. Cliché is thinking we have a baguette all the time in our hands, like a piece of bread every time in our head, in our hand. That's cliché. So it's it's just a stereotype, really. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if why the questions, they don't appear here. I'm trying to... Yeah, can you see this question? Oh, it just popped um, and... No, I don't, I don't actually see it. I okay. don't know if I, I, people I read, can, but... Yeah. I, I, read, I read some of the questions for you. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, someone is saying I have a lot of... Uh, I have a question. How can you write... How can you write better in a better way? Because I have a lot of mistakes. Yeah, writing. Um, practicing and having feedback. How can we improve... Yeah, yes, writing is feedback, very difficult. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I did, um, I did an English exam. I did the IELTS, and mm-hmm. the writing is so difficult. Um, and you have to practice a lot. You have to know your grammar as well in the writing mm-hmm. tasks. That's important, which is less important when you speak. As long as you can communicate, we don't really care. But in the writing, it is crucial. And, um, yeah, because in yeah. writing you have to be you have to be very accurate. You have to to write things as it is in the English language, not like in speaking. In speaking, you may just speak freely, and even you, you can make some mistakes, and that that's totally okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
And even even yeah, so what we call fluency, you can be fluent and make mistakes because as long as you can communicate and you can have a conversation and it flows, then it doesn't matter. You are fluent. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not the same in writing. Mm -hmm. I've got a question here for you, Marion. Okay. Uh, have you felt rejected as a non-native teacher? Uh, as a teacher, um, mm -hmm. I did in France. I haven't in terms of Instagram and meeting people online and things like yes. that. But in France, mm -hmm. yes, yes, a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, because there is this um, this stereotype, you know, that uh, only the native speakers can teach English in a good way. This is a very, very... Uh, false idea and some people they unfortunately they have it they think it's just he's he's a native speaker he can teach you english and that's not true yeah yeah which is bad because when i when i first had my diploma and i was looking for a job in france i went to a very big company a very famous mm -hmm. company here and i i went to the desk and said Uh, well, here is my CV. I'm looking for a job. You know, it was just spontaneous. And they said, well, are you French? And I was like, yeah. Well, okay, we don't mm -hmm. want your CV. Bye. Why? And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then you left. That's it. Exactly. I was like, okay. Uh, I was going okay. to cry. And I was like, oh, no, why? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm French. Uh, like, what am what am I supposed to be? Like, yeah, I'm French. Yeah, and they were they were French as well, but because they were the boss, it didn't matter, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, that that happened. Um. It's not very common, but yeah, it happens for sure. But I have questions about teaching French as well. Sometimes people ask me, "Can you teach French?" I can't. Mm -hmm. I'm really bad. <laughs> Oh, really? I, I, I Why? can't. Um, I guess because it's, it's my first language and I learned as I was growing up. But I have no mm -hmm. idea of the grammar or the rules or even some pronunciation because I don't think about it. So, yeah, I can't really. And mm -hmm. I teach in a school as well where they do French as a second language. And sometimes the teachers, they ask me questions, and I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea about this. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. It's, uh, even if you, if you speak the language, that's why we say it doesn't necessarily, uh, when you speak a language, that you will be good at teaching that language. It takes more than that. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it takes more than that. Mm -hmm. This question here, can you see the question now? Um, no, I still see, can't. I think, I think my questions and the live froze because it's still the same number of people, the same questions. So I think it froze. Oh, that's yeah, fine. I see. Yeah. yeah, I see. That's okay. <laughs> I read the questions for you. Okay. I have a problem. Uh, he said, I have a problem with spelling. Like, um, it, as you said, in writing, when you write, you have to be accurate and you have mm -hmm. to spell the words correctly. And in English, I would say more than French, I think. The words are pronounced differently from how we we write them. And this is actually one of the. I don't. I don't know if you have noticed this. Like between French and the English, there is this difference. In French, it's easier to spell the word sometimes. In mm -hmm. French, no. In English, no. In English, it's pretty difficult. It is. It is. Yeah. And I think reading helps a lot for that as well. So reading a little bit every day. And then writing and checking, you know, that's, um, mm -hmm. you could write, if that's a problem, you could write online, for example, on uh, something where English is the language of the software. I don't know if that makes sense, but if you have lap your laptop in, in French, for example, it's not yes. going to correct what you type. Mm -hmm. So you need yeah. to put it in English and then it will correct the spelling, which can be yeah. a good way as well to practice. Uh, yeah. But yeah, reading. Someone reading here does is uh, now. Someone here is writing "buku" as an example, like uh, as like "buku" is written in a way and pronounced in a way. But I would say in, in I would say I studied French at school, and I'm studying English now. And I studied English in the past, and mm -hmm. I would say that English has this more okay, yeah, more okay. words that are 
Yeah. Mm, I, I think we have a lot of silent letters in, in French. Yeah, a lot of silent letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. We've got, like, question. Uh, Marion, would you uh, recommend some resources online, some online resources, speaking about apps, YouTube channels, um, anything you have in mind that can help uh, beginners to start learning? I know that you're focusing on intermediate students, but for beginners, it's a different story. Like, uh... Yeah, um, I think the materials can be the same, but you need to find the specific listening or reading adapted for you as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I personally use a lot of YouTube. And mm -hmm. the way I do it when I started or restarted learning Spanish is, for example, week number one, I wanted to know how to talk about my habits, my routine. So that's mm -hmm. what I researched in Spanish on YouTube. And I found a lot of videos about what you do during the day, what you do during the week, how to talk about your sports, your habits. And I watched mm -hmm. quite a lot of YouTube videos about that topic for one week or two weeks. I made some notes and uh, and that's one way you can do um, to learn like at a beginner level. You need to have a topic in mind, something that yeah. is helpful for you at your stage. Good. I like and... this idea. Like you went, you want to learn Spanish and you went and you searched for um... Like for routine. how can I express my habits, my routine, my exactly. daily routine? This is actually a great idea. It's yeah. like something today I want to learn this. It's not like uh, I am following a, a program or something, but I choose what I learn. This is actually one of the best ideas. I like it. Yeah. So today I want yeah. to learn about food. Exactly. I'm into learning about food. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And me. then, <laughs> yeah, you can watch videos about food, cooking recipes. Um, translating your favorite food, I don't know. And then you can maybe write on a post-it and then put it in mm -hmm. your house on your food, <laughs> like on the fridge, yeah. and review yeah, that. Nice. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, but mm. the materials are going to be YouTube because that's free and you can find everything. But you need to know what you're looking for. Uh, yes. Because watching hours of videos, if it's not for a specific goal, it's not going to help you in the end, I think. Uh, it's good for comprehension, but yeah. It's better to have one clear goal in mind, one clear idea, research it, and then make some notes and uh, you know, write a little paragraph about it, talk in your mind, yes. create a story, an example, I don't know, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, do whatever like uh, helps you learn the language. This is a very uh, important question. Like, uh, I like this question. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, "Which is first, listening or grammar? Which comes first when we learn?" Mm, I would say listening is more important at first mm -hmm. because you can actually understand with the context, even if you don't understand the grammar. So, mm -hmm. for example, you might listen to a story about going to the beach, for example, mm -hmm. and you're going to understand some words, and so you can figure out, you can understand the context and, you know, comprehend. Even if you don't know if the story was yesterday or in the future, but you can understand the context, uh, which is fine, you know, that's great because you can guess and start guessing with context and little tips that you can hear. Uh, but in the end, you will need the grammar to re-express what you hear or to speak as well. So, of yeah, but I think listening is quite important and yeah. it's less boring as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, less boring. Yeah, I think that grammar we should keep it for time. Like uh, when you listen and you come across something you don't understand, then you go and check grammar. It's like grammar needs to come with the need when you need it. Exactly. Uh, sometimes when you speak and you want to express conditional sentences, and you don't know how to do it, then you look for a grammar rule that explains this, and then go back and you can do it right when you speak next time. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If you're stuck with something, then you can check and then try again and again until you get it right. Yeah. 
Yes, that's good. Another question here, it's uh, how to learn English from music. It's actually a quite famous topic that many people speak about now. Learning English yeah. from music is also a, a way we can, we can learn something from music. How can we use it? Yeah, a lot of people actually want to do that. Um, I think it's very difficult, but <laughs> that's just my personal opinion. Um, mm -hmm. But it's great to develop... You never, used, like, you never used music to, to learn? To learn? No. As, as mm -hmm. like something I enjoy, yeah, but not actually to learn because usually in the music, the lyrics are made in a way that fits, you know, the melody, etc., Yes. Um, you have specific words, sometimes slang. Um, it's usually contracted in a way that fits again the song. So I think it's just mm -hmm. more complicated. But a lot of people love music. So if it's something you love in your own language or if it's something you are passionate about, then it can be great for you. Um, again, you need to find things that you like and that you really enjoy doing. Of course, um, yeah. Yeah, but it's great to learn with different topics, like topic-based listening, because you have songs about love stories, you have songs about, I don't know, Friendship. summers, travelings, exactly. So you can try mm -hmm. to learn specific vocabulary through that as well. Yeah, of course. But it can be a way, because I'm speaking about this, because some people, they listen to music a lot. That's, that's the difference. Uh, when you, some people, it's like all their life is music. Music is mm -hmm. everywhere they go. They listen to music in the car, in the house, at work, everywhere. So why not include in this, as we yeah. said, like we are looking for immersion in, in, in the language. So we can, we can include like listening to music with uh, good. With the lyrics, for sure. Or like karaoke, that's, that's a good uh, example yeah, as well to develop your, your English. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Uh, good. So we've got other questions here. I'm sorry that I cannot see any of the comments, any, anything. I'm sorry, guys. You, you can see comments? You can see I comments? I can't. Now it's, it's froze. Oh, I don't know. It's yeah. a problem. <laughs> well, sometimes it happens, you know, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> um... This question, I want to ask you a question about education in China, in UK, sorry. You have anything to say about this? Um, education, education in the UK? Like, like university? People who, or... wants, people who want to go and study there, like foreign students. Oh, uh, okay. Um, it's great. It's expensive. <laughs> That's oh. the, that is the thing. Obviously, um, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very expensive, except if you can have a scholarship for something. I know, depending on the country you're from, sometimes the government can pay as well. Um, mm -hmm. I had lots of friends from Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and countries like that, where the government actually help and finance the, the studies. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you can have that, yes, great. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's more or less like 15,000 a year if you want to study oh. at university. So That's too much. It is a lot, yeah. But I did, yeah. I, I did it and I don't regret studying there because first, you can choose a very, very specific subject to study. I don't know if it's the mm -hmm. case in Morocco, but in France, if you want to study English and how to teach English, you need to study languages in general. So during four oh, years, no. you, you study languages like Spanish and other things, and then ah, you're yes. number five, you actually do something you like. <laughs> oh, so, so you have to study yeah. many languages, and then uh, the, in the final year, you study the language you want to teach. Exactly. You study just different subjects that are, they have no relation to what you want to do. You, you have no option. You can't choose until you're number mm -hmm. three, four, five, which is crazy. And how um, many years do you, you spend at the university? Um, in the UK, I spent one year and then I took my diploma in London. 
Mm -hmm. um, but I studied in France as well. So yeah, it was just an extra year to study something more specific and have more knowledge. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. So it's um, the most important thing is that it is expensive, guys. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's great. And the teachers are fantastic. You know, they know your name. They are very focused on you, which is not the same in like in, in a country where it's free, for example. You're just like, yeah. if you go, you go. If you don't go, you don't go. And, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This next question is about uh, translation. Uh, people who study mm -hmm. English as a second language, it's, it's a really common uh, question that people ask. Should we use translation? Should we translate uh, when we start learning the language? Is translation, does translation work? Is it a good method to learn? Or um, we should avoid it? I, I mean, for me, I don't like translating. I'm really bad <laughs> at translating French, English, or English. When, when you teach, do you have do you have a French students? French students. Yeah, yeah. You teach them I English. Mean, do you use French with them when you teach them, or no, you just use English? No, it's not allowed. Except I have one student. She's starting, as you say, like very, very low level. So with her, I, I speak in English sometimes, but not all the time because every word is new. Every word is a struggle. So we speak English and, and we practice the sentences, the vocabulary. But for sometimes some words, we use French. But if you're not starting from zero, not... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So yeah, we can hear. It. Yeah, I, I I don't think it's a it's a good idea. I I think mm -hmm. it's better if you learn with context. Um, if yes. you learn with pictures, stories, examples, and Sounds. the translation yeah. will happen in your head anyway, because your brain will make out the yes. the word and the picture together. But I don't think translating everything is a good idea. No, yes, it's too easy. For sure. Yeah. Like yeah, it's too easy, and some people are adapting this method to teach uh, to teach languages, to teach foreign languages. Mm -hmm. But still, it can be a method, uh, but it, it it will make learning like uh, slower. Like, you know, see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, if you learn English using only English, you're gonna go fast, and this is really the thing we need. So, uh, sure. you, you use translation, you're gonna make it slow for yourself. Slow and more difficult because then you don't know how to adapt in situations. You don't know how to work with the context and you're lost and, and, and like you can freeze and be scared because you don't have all the words translated for you. But if you can't make out with the context, that's it then. That's, that's the best way to learn yes. really. And for sure. also we will never know all the words in English. I don't know all the words in English. And that's just a fact, you know, it's, it's like that. Um, I don't yes. know all the words in English. I don't know all the words in French, <laughs> for sure. No, no one does, actually. Yeah. No one does. Even if you are a native speaker, you will not know all the words, like in the language. Yeah. So if yeah. you don't develop the good methods from the beginning, as you said, it's going to be slow, maybe more painful as well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have any more questions? I don't. Okay, okay. I think that's that's all. There are other questions, but still the, the, the other questions are just things that are repeated that, that mm -hmm. we mentioned. We spoke about for about pronunciation, about uh, translation as well. So uh, many of the points that 